Welcome back to Forecast Lab. We continue yet another day of dry weather on the Great Plains and in the Southwest. No sign of winter except in the Northeast and in North Dakota. We still have not shifted into La Nina. I've seen comments on social media saying the weird weather is due to La Nina, but officially it has not started and there's only a 50-50 chance we will even see it this winter. We are in Matt and Julian Oscillation Phase 6. What happens during that? Well, the strongest correlations are in the eastern U.S. We typically see warm weather from Texas to the Carolinas and into the northeast. And yeah, we are kind of seeing that, but a lot of cold air flooding through the Great Lakes and New England. Okay, let's take a look at that surface analysis this afternoon. Cold air flowing southward through the Great Lakes into the Midwest. The freeze line running from northern Michigan right through Chicago and over to Omaha. And you can see that not much of that cold air extends to the west. We're already developing southerly flow out there on the high plains. Temperatures up into the 40s around North Platte and on up towards Billings and Great Falls pretty rare during an Arctic outbreak to see that strong southwesterly flow off of the Rockies. Let's take a look at the jet stream level chart and we do see a positive PNA pattern. We're talking about the Pacific North American oscillation being in a positive phase. When that happens, we've got this ridging across western Canada that tends to be associated with warmer than average conditions. So right now that's focused on the western U.S., southwestern British Columbia, but there is Arctic air up to the north. And we also see troughing in the Gulf Coast region during a positive PNA phase. And up to the north, we find the polar vortex across Baffin Island and the Labrador Sea. All of that bringing northwesterly flow into the Great Lakes and the northeastern U.S. So they're right there in the crosshairs of that Arctic air. A series of waves moving through the flow, one across the Great Lakes, another through Montana. And this is supporting a strong Alberta clipper that's laying down a track of snow from Alberta into North Dakota today. Checking out the northeastern U.S., a large baroclinic leaf. Many of our experienced viewers will be able to pick that out. That's going to be this thing right here. And that's got a smooth backside forming almost an S shape right there. That tends to outline the location of the vorticity maximum center. And trailing that, an area of cold air advection, cumulus and stratocumulus. That's due to modification of that cold Arctic air mass, picking up heat and a little bit of moisture off the terrain there and that produces a shallow layer of instability. In fact, let me show that to you. So you can uh, go to Pivotal Weather there and just click on Indiana. They're in the bulk of that cloud. And what you'll see here is the cold air infiltrating, especially right there in that layer where it notches over to the left. That's going to be the maximum cold air advection. And you can see that very steep lapse rate right there, the red line leaning over to the left very sharply. That's almost dry adiabatic. And of course, that's not from surface heating. There's no sunshine. So that is being produced by the strong contrast between the cold air coming down from Canada and the relatively warmer ground and surface conditions. Aloft, we hit the top of that frontal layer at about 12,000 feet, and above that, that's actually tropical air. If we extend that down, that intersects at about 15 to 20 Celsius, which indicates if that air mass extrapolated down to the surface, it would have temperatures in the 60s and maybe even the low 70s. Looking at the surface map, there is snow coming down in the Adirondacks and in parts of western New York, but we really don't have much in the way of winter weather advisories. There is snow coming down around Montreal to Ottawa, and that should rapidly move to the east during the remainder of this evening. Rain further down this frontal boundary, currently from about Cumberland Gap to Beckley, West Virginia, and into the Chattanooga region. 
the Storm Prediction Center did have a marginal risk of severe weather. They've eliminated that, and we're looking at very minimal chances of any bad weather down that front. A very warm and humid day through the southeastern region. Yesterday, Pensacola, they reached 78 degrees, tying their record for the date. And about the only hazard, dense fog, just north of Key West and this little cluster of storms in the Bahamas. And there's your satellite view showing that deep convection currently east of Vera Beach, and that has pushed a little outflow boundary into Jacksonville and Daytona Beach. A strong onshore component in the Florida Panhandle into Alabama and Georgia, and that's supporting some cloud streets, which resembles what we see on a severe weather event. If you remember Hacklesburg, Philadelphia tornadoes, it was a very similar setup. However, the upper level lift associated with that today, not as strong. So we don't have to worry about any severe weather for today. And out there in Texas, let's take a look out there. You can see that frontal boundary pushing offshore near Galveston, out towards Victoria and Catula, and just not getting much convection going on there either. Cold advection following in the wake of that front, producing some shallow cumulus and stratocumulus fields in Arkansas. But that is about it. And yeah, look at this spectacular mountain wave activity in Colorado. Let's get a closer look at that. And there it is. You can see that strong westerly flow setting up this mountain wave out to Cumulus and Cirrus in the lee of the front range. What does that look like? Let me see if I can pull up some traffic cameras. This is looking south from, I think that's going to be the east side of Denver. And you can see some standing lenticular clouds. Very spectacular. And that's just a pleasant view on Interstate 70. Would love to be there about right now. Well, we've got some major weather in the Northern Plains and the Canadian Prairies focused right now in Alberta and southwestern Saskatchewan. It's going to be that low pressure area that's going to work down this thermal gradient. You can see those thickness lines. They're all packed, indicating lots of baroclinic energy available to the system as it comes down through that gradient. So we're going to be seeing winter storm conditions. And there's what we have right now. North Dakota, Minnesota struggling into the single digits today. Grand Forks, 9 degrees, 14 at Fargo, and Duluth, 16 degrees. And we're looking for snows to come out of Saskatchewan into North Dakota tonight. Looking for 2 to 7 inches there. Then we'll move into Minnesota late tonight into tomorrow. Looking for 4 to 7 inches across central Minnesota, blowing snow, including Minneapolis and St. Paul. And that'll spread into Wisconsin during the rest of the day on Thursday. 5 to 8 inches there with 10 inches locally on the lakes. Also, winter weather advisory extending as far south as Rochester down to Madison and Milwaukee. They could see up to maybe 2 to 5 inches through that region. And this is the forecast snow when all is said and done. The axis of heaviest snow coming down from northern North Dakota right through Fargo, Minneapolis, and over to just south of Green Bay. Now, I like this depiction because we're not messing around with model data, trying to pick out, you know, the eccentricities of each model and that kind of thing. This is from the National Digital Forecast Database. Each forecaster at each weather service office has evaluated their area individually. So I would put a lot of stock into that. Each office has their own experts looking at this. So this should be fairly reliable. And you can see at the borders, at the junctions between each office, there's not much disagreement. So that's indicating fairly high confidence and they've probably coordinated their snowfall estimates. So we're looking for about maybe seven to nine inches along the main track into Lake Superior and then less as you go south, three inches for Chicago and pretty much nothing for Des Moines. Pretty surprising. 
Here's a quick look at the upper air forcing, this area of lift in western North Dakota moving overnight into South Dakota and into the Minneapolis and Des Moines area for 7 a.m. Now they are focusing on the north side of this area of lift, so I think maybe we've got a lot of dry air coming further to the south. The moisture itself kind of spiraling around the north side of this system and interacting with that area of forcing. So that first area of lift spreading into the Great Lakes for Thursday, a secondary area of lift coming down through the high plains into Nebraska and into St. Louis and Chicago for later Thursday. But I think by that time, a lot of the available moisture is going to be very limited. And some fairly stout westerly winds associated with this weather system. So we've got high wind warnings and watches all through Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. Around the time you're watching this, this is how the gusts look. Yeah, quite strong out there around Great Falls to Billings. The models indicating 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts and another secondary area down there in south eastern Wyoming. So that's going to extend down the front range and gradually it should start tapering off going into tomorrow. So taking a look at the current conditions, very light winds at Denver, but gusting to 41 knots at Cheyenne, strong winds in the passes. Then we go up north. No real problems until you get to Livingston. Look at that, 61 knots. What is that in miles per hour? That's about 70 miles per hour for gusts. Lots of gusts elsewhere in the 40 knot range across the state. Then checking out the southwestern states fair for the most part from the four corners into the lower deserts. We were looking for low 80s at Phoenix for today with 78 at Tucson. Southern California they were expecting 82 degrees at Los Angeles but up in the San Joaquin Valley persistent fog even into the afternoon hours, you can see as the day goes on, just not getting rid of that fog. And that's a very common occurrence in December. Still dealing with Santa Ana wind conditions in Southern California, wind advisories in effect earlier today for the San Fernando Valley, gusts up to 50 miles an hour, and those will be tapering off through the evening. And in the Northwestern states, there's that Pacific system. It's moving quickly. At dawn, it was in Idaho, Oregon, and as we go into the dusk hours, starting to approach North Dakota and the High Plains. Yesterday, Roseburg reached 61 degrees out there in Oregon. That set a record for the date. We also saw a quarter to a half inch of rain across parts of eastern Washington with two to three inches around Olympia. So let us take a look at that forecast. These are expertly analyzed weather maps. The fronts are not from models. There's no way to get those from computer analysis. So this is done by myself. This is the GFS model forecast, and you can compare that with the model data itself to see exactly what's going to happen. So going into the overnight hours and into tomorrow, there's that snowstorm in North Dakota into Minnesota, rapidly advancing eastward during the day tomorrow. We will see a push of cold air once again into North Dakota and Minnesota, even out towards Glasgow. They're looking for a high of 7 degrees there. The high will be 20 at Bismarck. But in contrast, the High Plains not really getting any of that. Highs in the 40s from Casper to Billings and Great Falls. Even Denver looking at 60 degrees. In the southwestern U.S., more fog in the San Joaquin Valley. Also, we're going to be seeing fog in the Snake River Valley. The fog may not burn off until late, if at all. But in the deserts, Phoenix once again into the low 80s. Then we go into Friday. We start out with dynamically generated snow all through the Great Lakes as that Alberta Clipper continues pushing to the east and cold air will be infiltrating that same area. The colder Arctic air will not come very far south. It's going to be limited basically to this area right here, but areas north of that line will remain below freezing later this week. Then we go into Saturday. Now the Arctic air focuses on the Great Lakes. 
It will remain below freezing from Des Moines to Indiana to Pittsburgh northward. So temperatures struggling to get out of the 20s. Saturday will be the coldest day of the week for Wisconsin and northern Michigan. And then for the northeastern states, very cold on Sunday. Looking for highs of 17 at Buffalo, 18 at Albany, and 25 at New York City. Again, those are afternoon highs. And I forgot to point out this new Pacific weather system. Let me go back to Saturday. Yeah, there it is quickly coming on shore. Most of this is going to be in the form of rain. Snow levels will be running about six to 7,000, so no major winter weather problems. But the usual vulnerable areas up in the higher elevations, they will be seeing some quick snow pass through. So that'll move into the Rockies and the Four Corners area for Sunday, and then out onto the plains for early next week. On Monday, most everybody warms up. Even New York and New England starting to see 20s as that southerly flow starts up. In the western states, continued very rainy through Monday and Tuesday. Snow levels about 7,000 with that strong southerly flow. And then we go into Tuesday. Yeah, there's a new system coming on short. Not much snow except in the higher elevations of the northern Cascades and a Pacific system moving through Texas. Rain chances all through the Midwest into the Mississippi River Valley and the Arklatex. And this will go through the remainder of the period. There's Christmas Eve. Looks like a little burst of cold air coming down south. I don't think we're going to see much in the way of very cold air. But, you know, Christmas Eve will take what we can get. A strong Pacific system moving inland. And for Christmas Day, it looks like this. No snow except up there in New England. The central U.S. seeing some cool northerly flow. You can see that thermal trough right there, but the 540 line remaining well to the north. So this, to me, indicates temperatures in the maybe 30s, 40s, and 50s. And this has kind of flip-flop from the earlier models. Just two days ago, they were looking for deep southerly flow through the Great Plains for Christmas. So a bit of a change there. Anyway, going into the remainder of the period, there's how things look. And can't really tell much about the weather patterns, but we are heading into Matt and Julian Phase 7. What happens when we get into Phase 7? Well, the signals for warm conditions east of the Rockies disappear. So our chances for cold air outbreaks may be on the increase as we head towards New Year's. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Now you probably saw back on Saturday, we released that little UFO mystery video. Got 200,000 views. Guess how many new supporters we picked up? Just one. That was Ira Meisenheimer, and thank you for answering the call. And of course, you know, we don't really expect much from those fringe topics, so no big surprise, no big disappointment. But that does outline that you viewers who are here for Forecast Lab, you are our most important audience. So thank you for that support. And also thank you to Michael Hyman and Matthew Genot for the increased levels of support that did not go unnoticed. So thank you very much. All right. We'll see you back here for another edition of Forecast Lab on Friday. Hope you have a good one and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.